the NCAA is going to release NIL guidance, new NIL guidance regarding institutional involvement. But Gary, what in the world does that mean? Well, basically it means that the NCAA is going to tell schools next week how involved they can be in getting NIL deals for their players. That's basically what this means. Uh, you go through, this is uh, from On3, but really the report came from Nicole Auerbach at The Athletic. Uh, but really, it, what it's going to reportedly address is what is permissible and impermissible when it comes to an athletic department's involvement in NIL activity. It says uh, new rules will not be enacted, but the guidance will clarify the role that a school can play. Now, it does include examples. So it says one situation which will be permitted uh, is an athletic department assisting in NIL education of his athletes. That seems totally reasonable, right? Like, why would they? Why would a school not be able to teach players what to expect from a name, image, likeness deal, or what they can and cannot do? Right? That seems just ridiculously easy. So obviously, the NCAA is going to have to go along with that. Uh, which, by the way, if you guys are watching live, feel free to jump into the chat. Uh, you can be part of the conversation. I'm doing this live because I haven't gotten a chance to do it. Uh, I've seen several more people jump in here, so. If, uh, if you guys want to be involved in the conversation, absolutely jump in. Uh, it says, an interesting note is schools have always been able to introduce athletes to boosters, uh, which has always been allowed by the NCAA, which, yeah, we've seen that time and time again. Um, it says, uh, it does say that, you know, an athletic department assisting in NIL education of his athletes, that's one thing. On the flip side, a university giving cash to a collective to funnel money to athletes is prohibited. Well, duh. Obviously, the school can't give somebody else money to pay one of their own players. But at the same time, why would they? If you've got other people willing to make the payments, I mean, we all read the Bagman story that Stephen Godfrey put out years and years ago. We know how this works. Uh, it says this would not be classified as a new rule. The NCAA has always been against institutions paying athletes for their athletic performance. Uh, but again, as we just mentioned, schools have always been able to introduce athletes to boosters. Like you, you remember the guy that owned the pizza place in Oxford when it, with the whole Ole Miss NCAA deal back when Hugh Freeze was the coach. Like they've always been able to connect them because boosters have always been around these programs. Like why would you not? Uh, it says NIL stakeholders who responded to On Three characterized the news of the NCAA adopting new NIL guidance as a yawn. Uh, others pointed to the fact of how the NCAA is yet to actually come down with the force mode, uh, on NIL. They're not going to be able to. The Supreme Court shot this thing down nine to nothing. You cannot stand in the way of an athlete slash student, whatever, of actually making a living, of earning whatever it is that somebody deems them to be worth. You can't come in and say that they need to be, that they need to have uh, uh, the right market number, right? You can't say that somebody can't overpay for somebody to advertise their product or their business or whatever. Because, by God, your own schools are doing this. When Jimbo Fisher got that ridiculous deal with Texas A&M, that just put this whole thing to bed. The whole thing. MH5 jumps in. Schools should be involved in educating these kids. Large amounts of money will have tax implications that these young kids will need to pay. Uh, get these guys a good tax guy. Yeah, that's part of it. That's absolutely part of it. Uh, the other part is educating them on the shadiness of some of these people that are going to try and sign them into exclusive deals, etc., to where they can't get out of them, right? That's the other part. Like, you get signed into some kind of crazy, hey, I'm going to do a podcast appearance once a week, but all of a sudden, you can't go do other podcasts? You can't go do other interviews with competitors, etc. Like, you you have to find somebody that can write out the contracts correctly or somebody that will teach them what to look for in these contracts that you wouldn't normally think about, right? It, these are important business decisions that are being made by these players that will impact what they can make going forward. The fact that the NCAA is still diving into this stuff and trying to figure out what to tell schools to do and what not to tell them to do, et cetera, is just mind-blowing to me. And I understand that they have to have at least some kind of involvement. Otherwise, what's the whole point of the NCAA at all? But there's nothing that they can do as far as guardrails or whatever else, right? There's nothing that can happen here. They're not going to be able to do anything. 
Because as soon as they try and put, as soon as they try and put some kind of handcuffs on this, the Supreme Court will come back at them because somebody's going to file a suit and they're going to take it back up to uh, Brett Kavanaugh and that bunch, and those guys are going to stomp a mud hole in the NCAA all over again. We just saw it happen in the Austin case. Like, it's going to happen again. They, they practically dared the NCAA to try and stop something like this. Bottom line, MH5 said, what if these P5 schools tell the NCAA to kick rocks? Well, I do believe that that's coming eventually. That is coming eventually, but that, that's the reason why the NCAA is not going to do anything right now. They're, they're just not. Uh, if it, The issue that you run into with the P5 schools, if they want to try and break away from the NCAA, is that they are going to have to set up something similar to the NCAA anyway. So why would you get rid of something that's already built when you can actually influence what goes on at the NCAA? You can rewrite the rules that are already in place because the school presidents are the ones that actually run the NCAA. Just fix it from the inside out. That's the easiest way to do this. So, yeah, it, seeing this today just uh, absolutely blew me away because why? Why are we still doing guidance on NIL? Like, I understand that some of these schools maybe need some help, but gracious me, this is mind blowing just mind blowingly dumb is what it is it's just ridiculous thanks for listening to winning cures everything make sure and subscribe on youtube or your favorite podcast app and make sure to leave a nice five star review you can follow gary on twitter at gary wce and the show is at winning cures be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show